Hello and welcome to the webinar, The Danish Tax System for Internationals. Uh, my name is Ida Andersen and I work for Confederation of Danish Industry, um, the expat in Denmark network. And today I'm here with Tina Tuft from the tax agency and she's going to tell us a lot more about uh, the Danish tax system and what to do and what to be aware of as an international in Denmark. So welcome, Tina. Thank you. And thanks for uh, being willing to talk to us and uh, l tell us a lot about the Danish tax system. Um, maybe first of all, um, we should talk a bit about um, Denmark as a, a country, um, because Denmark is known to have quite a high tax rate, uh, but actually Denmark is also a country where uh, people happily pay their taxes. Most um, of them. Most of them, <laughs> exactly. But could you tell us a bit more uh, about what the Danish taxpayers actually pay to? Yes. In Denmark we have something called a welfare society, and that means that you can get a social protection if you get unemployment, you can ha get help from the municipality, you can go free to the doctor, you don't pay for being at the hospital, you can have your child uh, in education, free education. And approximately 44% of the tax is uh, spent on social protection, 13, 14% in uh, healthcare, and 13% to the free education. So approximately 75% of the tax are spent on those three. That is our top three. Then you also pay to the police, military, so that is what you get for the money. So you have a very high tax to pay in Denmark, but you get something for the tax. Maybe not now, but then later when you get old enough, you can apply for pension from Denmark. And also you can have your child from kindergarten to the university for free. Okay. And I guess specifically also the healthcare system is, is well known and something that's quite unique to the Scandinavian countries. Yes, you will have to pay something for yourself uh, if you're going to the dentist, but if you're going to the doctor or hospital, that will be for free. Great. Okay. Thank you. So now that we know a bit about why Danes, most of them, happily <laughs> pay their pay. taxes, um, then let's get down to what you're actually here for today, um, knowing what to do and what to be aware of when you're an international in Denmark. Um, so. Imagine that I am completely new to Denmark. I just moved to Denmark. Um, what do I need to know in terms of taxes? What do I need to be aware of? First of all, you need to know what your kind of obligation you have according to the Danish tax. And the first one you'll have to do will be contact the Danish tax agency so we can find out how your tax liability will be to, to Denmark. Because maybe you also have an living address in another country, or if you only be here for a short time, uh, for working, studying. So contact us so we can find out if you will be full tax liable or limit tax liable to Denmark. That will be the first one. And also we need to know, will you have residence in Denmark to rent an apartment? Such kind of things that will also depend on what kind of uh, tax liability you will have to Denmark. Okay. <clears throat> so. If the situation is the fact that I moved to Denmark because I um, either get a job or I'm going to study for a while um, and I only live in Denmark, then what is my status then? If you come to Denmark for a longer time and you rent an apartment, you get a Danish address, then you'll be full tax liable. Okay. And if you only will be here, for example, for a month and you don't have any address, you'll be limit tax liable. The difference between the full and limit tax liable is that when you're full tax liable, then you are like everybody else in Denmark. If you are limit tax liable, you'll only be tax of the income that you have here in Denmark. And that will only be for the period that you are in Denmark. If you're full tax liable, then you'll have to tell us what you have in your suitcase when you come from another country. Mm -hmm. We need to know, do you have an apartment? Do you have a house? Do you have stocks? Do you have uh, life insurance, pensions, uh, saving account in other countries? All that kind of stuff you'll have to t report to the Danish tax agency. And that is because 
when you are full tax liable to Denmark, your global income will be taxed in Denmark. Okay. But we have some <clears throat> double taxation agreement to avoid about that you are paying full tax in two countries. So you need to report what kind of tax or what kinds of uh, stuff you have in other countries. Also, if you have a spouse in another country, and then we will find out how you'll be taxed here in Denmark. Okay. Now maybe that's a very um, practical question, but now you say uh, when you say uh, you need to contact us. So what do you do? Do you call the tax authorities, or what is the first thing that you do when you arrive in Denmark? The first step will be to give us a call, and you can find the contact information in our English website, Get DK English, and we have people who can speak English, so mm -hmm. you can give us a call and then we can make the tax right away. Okay. Otherwise, you can also send us an email, but that will take some days before you'll have an answer. And maybe we will have some following questions. So first of all, give us a call because if we have further questions, we can ask them right away. Okay. And I assume you can also find information online. Yes, you yep. can find all kinds of information on our English website, uh, SCAT DK English. Mm -hmm. You can find all information in, in our Danish website, and then we have a light version in English, so maybe you will not have the answers in all the questions, but then you can give us a call. But most of it you can find in our English website. Okay, great. And another um, probably more practical question also. Um, in order to, um, if you then realize by calling that you have to pay taxes in Denmark, then I know that there are some steps that you need to take. Yes. When you give us a call and you tell us that you have an income from Denmark and income from other countries maybe also, then we'll make you a tax card. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a tax card and you have a job and you get salary from the job, then you are paying 55% in tax. So. Let's it will be better for you to have a tax card. And then we will find out how much you will have in deduction per month and what the withholding rate you will have. And the withholding rate will be different from municipality to municipality. So you okay. can have a colleague who have a lower or higher withholding rate than you. It depends on which municipality that you are living in. And each okay. year, in the 5th of September, where you are living will depend what kind of withholding rate you'll have the following year. Okay, okay. So let's uh, just for a bit set aside the withholding rate and the deductions. Now you mentioned some words that we'll get back to. I have some more questions. Um, uh, now back to the, the tax card. You say that if you don't have a tax card, you pay 55% tax, and that's a lot of tax even for a Dane. <laughs> um, so obviously you would like to avoid paying that uh, that much taxes, and yes. I guess the 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 reason being for paying that much, that is because you don't have a tax card, and make sure of that you are paying the correct amount in tax. Because if you have a very high salary, mm -hmm. you will also have to pay top bracket tax. So if you mm -hmm. earn more than five hundred and approximately seventy seven thousand per year, you will have to pay top bracket tax. Okay, that means you will have to pay extra fifteen percent in tax. So be sure of that you are paying enough in tax. The rules are saying you must pay 55% tax. And also 8% in labor market contribution. Ooh. Because when you are working in Denmark and you have a salary, you are paying labor market contribution. And that is also a tax. You're not paying the labor market contribution if you have benefits or if you get SU or something uh, like that, then you are not paying uh, the 8% labor market contribution. Okay. When we make the tax card, then we will make from the salary you have, we will calculate for the year, and then we will take your allowance and divide it for the months that will be in the year. So, for example, if you arrive the 1st of July, then you will be tax liable for six months, and then we will divide your allowance for six months. So you have exactly the same amount each month in allowance. Okay. So you can be sure of this amount I have tax free every okay. month. Okay. And that is because we have uh, three types of uh, tax card in Denmark. We have something called no tax card, uh, no tax, tax exemption card, free card is the Danish word. That is only young people who have it. 
and that is if you earn less than 46,000 per year, then you are below the limit for the personal allowance and then you will have a no tax card. Then we have the primary tax card and that is the most of the people in Denmark who have the primary tax card where you have your monthly deduction. And then we have the secondary tax card. There you only have the withholding rate, no tax free amount per month. And that is if you have more than one employer, then you can go to employer number two and say, I have this uh, secondary tax card and you must withhold 40% in tax. Okay, okay. So if you do not have a tax card, you get taxed the highest amount possible to make sure that you pay all the taxes that you could be paying. Yes. Um, if you have a tax card, when you when you get that, you can either as a young person who maybe delivers newspapers, I don't know, but doesn't earn a lot, you have uh, the, the free card or the uh, tax, tax exemption. exempt card, or then you have a primary tax card or a secondary tax card if you have more than one um, employer. employer. Yes. Okay. And the primary tax card can also be without the tax-free amount per month. If you, for example, have your own business, then you must pay the tax of the profit that you have from your own business. And mm-hmm. in the first place, we take from the allowance per month, and then we'll make some forms you can pay if you will have to pay more in tax. Okay. And the personal allowance, that is an allowance everybody in Denmark have. Even a newborn child have the right to an, a personal allowance. And that means that you can earn 46,000, approximately 47,000 per year without paying tax. So if you arrive the 1st of July, you can have for six months, that means you can have 23,500 in tax-free amount. Okay. So if I say I move to Denmark 1st of July in a year, whatever money I earned in another country before the 1st of July? We don't care about. Okay. We will only care about the stuff that you have abroad from the period that you are tax liable to Denmark. So if mm. you have a house in another country, you sell it before you arrive to Denmark, then you will not have to report it here okay. in Denmark. Okay. But if you still have it after you have arrived to Denmark, Mm-hmm. and you arrived the 1st of July and you sold your house the 1st of September, then you'll have to report it for July and August. Okay. That makes sense. And now we we talk quite a bit about the, the tax card and the different tax cards. So do I actually contact the tax authorities and then they give me a tax card? Or how, how does it work with the tax card? It sounds tax card. If you're looking, if you are ch- selling a small children a tax card, then they think, yes, you're going to find a treasure. A tax card that is in form of you get a piece of paper, but mm-hmm. nowadays it will be in the computer. So we send the information to the employer that there is a tax card for you in the system. Mm-hmm. And then the employer are taking it from the computer. So you don't get a piece of paper. You get a preliminary income assessment. You can have it in a paper. If you are not on digital post, then you'll have it in paper. Otherwise, you will have it in the e-tax. So okay. it will only be in the computers. Okay, so you log into the tax system, give online, I guess, the tax information that the tax yes. authorities ask for. And then that information is sent to your employer, if you have any. And you have an online e-tax uh Tax card. Tax card, where yes. you can see it, but you do not get it sent by a post. And the only information your employer will get will be what is your withholding rate and your monthly deduction, not what you have reported in salary or interest or okay. trade union fee and so on. They will okay. not have. They'll only have the information about the tax-free amount and the withholding rate. Okay, Tina, so now we talked a bit about um, the Danish tax system and what to do as a newcomer and be aware of in terms of tax liability. Um, and then you already um, touched upon uh, the different taxes and you talked about the municipalities in which you live. So could you elaborate a bit more and tell us about um, what kind of taxes you pay in Denmark? We have two types of tax. We have Direct taxes and mm-hmm. indirect taxes. The direct tax, that is the tax that you can see that you are paying from your salary or your income that you are being taxed of here in Denmark. So that will be the tax that you are paying from the withholding rate. It is the labor market contribution. And 
That is the direct tax. And we have three types of uh, tax. We have bottom bracket tax. Everybody in Denmark are paying uh, bottom bracket tax. Then we have the, and that is the state tax. And there we also have the top bracket tax. That if you're in more than 577,000, then you'll have to pay extra tax. And that is 15%. So your higher income, your higher tax. And then we have the municipality tax. And it is different from municipality to municipality. So if you move to Copenhagen, then you will have the Copenhagen rates uh, for municipality tax. If you move to Aarhus, then it will be the rate for municipality Aarhus. So you can have a colleague who have a lower percent or higher percent than you. And the difference can be six, seven percent. There is a high difference between the cheapest uh, municipality tax and to the highest municipality tax in Denmark. And then we have the church tax. So if you are a member of the church, then you also are paying church tax. And again, it is different from municipality to municipality. It can be from 0.6% and up to, I think it is 1.2%. Okay. So almost in half percent. And it again, it depends on which municipality that you will be registered in mm -hmm. or where you are living the 5th of September. So if you move the 4th of September, then it will be the new municipality you will have to pay tax off the following year are moving the 6th of September, then it will be the old uh, municipality. Okay. So if you move from Copenhagen to Aarhus the 6th of September, then it will be the rate for Copenhagen that you will have for to pay full year. for the full year next okay. year. Okay. Um, and then we have the indirect tax. Mm -hmm. I used to call the secret tax because that is a tax that you are paying. You cannot see that you are paying. But every time you are going shopping, if you buy a bottle of milk, you are paying VAT. Okay. And that is 25%. When you turn on the light, going to the shower, you are paying green tax. So that is a tax that you are paying without knowing that you are paying. You just pay it. Because you pay it through supplies and yes. what you buy and, and stuff. Yes. Okay. Okay. And when you have the receipt from the store, you cannot see how much money you have paid in VAT. You can okay. just see the amount that you have paid for a bottle of milk. Okay. But that is including 25% VAT. Okay. So the indirect taxes is something that um, you don't see. It's the secret tax that is paid, for example, when you, you buy uh, things. Yes. And the direct taxes is something that you, for example, see it on your payslip. Uh, or if you have a property, you are paying property value tax. That is also a direct tax. Okay. Okay. Um, what about now? That's a, a minor thing, but you mentioned that the church tax, and then you said if you're a member of the church. How do you know if you're a member of a church? That is only you who can tell it. When you are going to the municipality and tell, now you live in Denmark, you'll be registered with a CPR number. You'll get a CPR number if you have a Danish address where you'll be registered. And they will ask you if you're a member of the church or expect to be a member of the church. Okay. And it depends on your answer. They will report in the system member or not member. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make the tax card according to the information we have from the CPR system. Okay. So okay. again, it depends on what kind of information you are giving to the municipality when okay. you are registered now, you have arrived to Denmark and you need a CPR number. But if you're a member of a church, is that something that, who can see this information that you've given to the tax authorities? That is only you who can see it and the municipality and when you look in your preliminary income assessment, you can see in the right corner if you are paying church tax. Okay. And if you think you don't have to pay the church tax is what's wrong, then you'll have to go to the church office and tell them that you're not member of the church and okay. then they will change to not member and then we'll make a new preliminary income assessment with a lower okay. withholding rate. Okay, great. Um, now you already mentioned um, something about uh, a preliminary uh, income assessment. Yes. Um, and I know that there are some things <coughs> that you need to be aware of during um, the year and in terms of uh, preliminary and annual tax assessment. Could you tell us a bit about yes. what to do The then? preliminary income assessment, the Danish word is uh, forskudsopgørelsen. That is a kind of budget. That is a tax budget for the year. As well as you're in the bank when you make the householding account, you make what do I expect to have in 
expensive, what do I have in income? That would be the same with the preliminary income assessment. What do I expect to have in salary? What kind of deduction do I have? And then you report it to the preliminary income assessment. And then we make the tax card. And then when the year has gone, we will make the tax assessment notice. And the tax assessment notice, that is the final tax. That is the final accounting of your tax. And the Danish word is årsopgørelsen. And we, in the beginning of March, you can see the result. And depends on how your preliminary income assessment has been calculated, then you'll have the result at the tax assessment notice, where you maybe will have zero in tax, or you'll have to pay some tax, or you'll get some tax refund. Okay. So basically, the preliminary income assessment is you uh, preparing a budget, so um, typing in what you expect to earn and what... what um, what kind of deduction what you kind can of have. deductions you can have and then the annual tax assessment that is released in March that's where you see if you were right or wrong yes <laughs> or whether you have to pay taxes or you will get some taxes or maybe um, zero. and that is because you can only when the year has gone you can say exactly how much you have earned how much you can have in the deduction and most of the time when people get an outstanding tax that is because of the deductions okay. it was calculated wrong. For example, uh, last year a lot of people was working from home because of uh, COVID-19 and forgot to make Change. the okay. new uh, tax, uh, new preliminary income assessment. So they have too much in deduction for transport. They maybe have for 200 days, but most of the year we have been working from home, so it should only have been maybe for 40, 50 days working. Okay. So what happens like that um, if you make a mistake in the preliminary income assessment? You can always change your preliminary income assessment. You can change it every month if you want to. You can change it every day without problem. And that's by logging in online? Yes, or? you just log in the e-tax, which I will tell about a little bit later. You log in, you make the changes, and normally you will get the result right away, mm -hmm. unless that you have make a very huge mistake, like let's say you maybe have an one, two extra zeros in the amount, or if you have changed too many times at the same day, you can also be locked out, okay. or you will have to accept your registrations, that you, the changes that you have been made. But you can change it so many times you want to, mm -hmm. you can change it even until the end, last day in the year. So if you born you New Year's Eve, you're sitting there and you don't know what you need to do, then you can log on the e-tax and change your tax card. Okay. So you can change the preliminary income assessment until the last day in the year. The 1st of January, closed for the former year. For the previous year. Yes. Okay. And that's the numbers then that you, in the tax office, um, calculate uh, based on information from your employer, I guess. Um, yes. So if you don't change it before the last day in the year, then you'll have the bill or the money in March. So it will not happen. So if you have calculated too wrong, it will not happen. You will not get a fine or something like that. You'll just get a bill you'll have to pay. Okay. Okay. Um, so how you say that you can, if you want to change the the preliminary income assessment, which is the information that will be visible in the tax card, um, that you can change it if you want to every single day. I guess not a lot of people do that, <laughs> and that's not no. really necessary, but are there specific times where you should be aware of changing your, your preliminary be tax aware assessment? Of if you get from going from salary to unemployment, okay. because when you, are in, when you have a job, and you get a salary, you get an extra deduction. The Danish word is uh, beskæftigelsesfradag. Mm -hmm. That is a working-related uh, deduction. You get an extra deduction for working. That is something the government has decided that people who are working will have a higher deductions. So if you're going from salary to unemployment, it is important that you change your preliminary income assessment. Or if you're going from salary to be a person who will study, you'll also have to change it. Also, if you buy a house, sell a house, 
buy a car, sell a car, if you get loan in the bank where you'll have to pay interest, then it is also important to change the preliminary income assessment. Also, if the interest are changing, and right now you have minus, so you are paying to have money in the bank. Okay. So, as well as the bank, you are not paying so much in interest. Some years ago, it was not unusual to pay 12, 13% in a loan in interest. Today, you are paying maybe 2% or 3%. So it is important if the interest are changing. So when you know exactly how your situation will be, then change it. Normally, we are saying check each quarter mm -hmm. and see if it's still realistic. Okay. Also, if you suddenly get a higher salary, mm -hmm. see will you reach the limit for the top bracket tax, then it's also very important to change it. Okay. So what happens then if I uh, log in, and we'll talk a bit about how to log in uh, later, but what happens if I log in and it's very confusing? I mean, I, I'm a Dane and I sometimes uh, am not 100% sure where to put the different numbers. What First can of you all, do? don't type zero in the boxes you don't need. Okay. Only change the boxes that you need to do. Otherwise, okay. you can be sure of that that a preliminary income assessment will have to be accepted from the Danish tax agency. Okay. So only change the boxes that you need, salary, interest, and you just write the new amount, press accept in the bottom, you go to the bottom of the page, then you press accept, go again, and then you can see the new tax card. And if there is not so much difference between the tax-free amount per month, then it is probably okay, and then you go to the bottom and say okay, and then you have the new tax card in the system, and your employer have it the next day. In automatically. Automatically. Yeah. But what happens if I don't know if I have a deduction from the bank, for example, and I don't know where to put it? Most of the most common of the deduction, it's because we are in the e-tax and we are in Denmark, it would be in Danish, but most of the most common the deduction there is a question signed. Okay. If you press on that, then you some of them there is the possibility to read about it in English. Okay. But always you are always welcome to contact us if you are not sure which kind of box you will have to report it in. Mm -hmm. Give us a call. It is free. That is the part of the tax that you are paying that you can give us a free call. Mm -hmm. And then we can guide you and say that would be in this box. You will have to type. And if it is interest to the bank, that would be in box uh, 481. Okay. So there you can type the amount that is the most common. The most common deduction in Denmark is the deduction for transport. Okay. And that is in box 417. Okay. So, you but most a... of them have the questionnaire where you can press and then you can have an English version. Impressive memory with the tax boxes, <laughs> I must say. That is because um, I'm working with it every day. <laughs> <true>. <laughs> um, we have now a couple of times, uh, or you have uh, mentioned um, deductions. Um, could you tell us a bit more about what that is and what kind of deductions you can get? The deduction that is a deduction that you have, you can have, so you have to pay less in tax. Okay. You can have deduction. For the interest that you, if you buy a house, then you probably have loaned some money to buy the house. Mm -hmm. Then you can have the deduction for the interest that you are paying. Also, if you have a house outside Denmark and you have a mortgage that you are paying to, you can have the deduction for the interest to the foreign property. You can have the deduction if you are a member of the trade union. If you are paying to an unemployment insurance, most of the people in Denmark are paying to an unemployment insurance. You can also have the deduction for that. And if you have a job where you have to drive more than 12 kilometers each way, you can have the deduction for the kilometers you have or about the 24 kilometers per day. Okay. And then you, you will calculate, when you have reported how much you should have in deduction, then you make the new tax card where you will have a higher tax-free amount per month. Okay. So you get more in, in natural okay. from your salary. And, and who is checking uh, this information that you put in the deductions? Most of the information, as, as long as it is inside Denmark, we get the information automatic from the bank, from the trade union. The transport, you will have to tell us because we cannot say 
how many days you have been driving. That is only you who can tell us how many days that you have been driving for work. So we are believing in people, but of course we are also checking out. So each year we are taking some person out and they will have to come with information for us for the deduction. Okay. But most of the part we have the deduction from what we are calling third part. Okay. So there you will not have to do anything, only if you are not agreed in the amount that they have reported to the Danish tax agency. But then you will have to go to the part who have reported the amount and ask them to make a calculation, a new reporting to the Danish tax agency. So if the bank gave the tax authority some information that you find is incorrect, you must contact the bank yes. and ask them to change it. Okay. You cannot change it because it is a lockbox. So the box, you cannot write the amount in the tax assessment notice. Okay. There you will have to go to the employer or bank or trade union. Okay. Okay. Um, we have talked about the uh, preliminary and the annual uh, tax assessment. But if we, and you also mentioned the, the, the date that defines which municipality you pay taxes to if you move, which was the 5th of September. Um, but if we look at the calendar year overall, what are the, the dates or the periods of time that you should be aware of? The tax year in Denmark runs for the calendar year from okay. 1st of January until the end of the year. That's so easy. So following the calendar. Yeah. So if you arrive the 1st of July, your tax year begins the 1st of July mm -hmm. and then it will be to the end of December. And then 1st of January, we are starting a new year. In mid-March, we have the tax assessment notice released in the e-tax and that is the most important date during the whole year because people will get the result of the tax, do I have to pay tax or will I get some tax refund from the Danish tax agency. And normally it will be in mid-March and it will be open Friday evening and in the first two days it will be impossible to get logged on in the e tax because there is more than one million people who want to look at the same time. So wait a few days and then you can go to the e tax and see the result. And if you are an ordinary taxpayer like me and you don't have anything from abroad or your own company, then you have the deadline to the 1st of May to change your tax assessment notice. So if you need to report your deduction for transport, you can do it until the 1st of May. Okay. You can also do it after the 1st of May, but then you will have to tell us why you want to change your tax assessment notice. And maybe we will ask you to send some documentation that can be the train tickets or if you are crossing a bridge, then we will ask for some receipt from the bridge. Okay. But that will be after the 1st of May. And sometimes we will also contact you later in the year and ask for some documentation for your deduction. Okay. If you have property or something else from abroad or your own company, then you have the deadline the 1st of July. Okay. And it is important that you are declaring your income tax return before the 1st of July. Okay. Because if you're doing after the 1st of July, you'll get a kind of fine, 200 oh, okay. kroners per day that you are too late to declare it. Okay. So if you declared, let's say, the 6th of July, that is five days too late, you'll get a fine of 1,000 kroners, okay. which you'll have to pay. But you can do it from the beginning of you know, mid-March, so you have a lot of time to do it. So don't wait until the 1st of July, okay. but do it before. Okay. And then in mid-November, we make the tax card for the next year, the preliminary income assessment for the following year. So in the beginning of November, you can see your tax card for the following year and you can change it and most of the time people also find out that they need to change the tax card for this Existing year. Existing year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. So if something major happens in your life, like you take a loan, you change job, something in your salary changes, you get married, things like that, then you should make sure that the preliminary income assessment is correct. In March you need to check the annual assessment is correct. If something is incorrect or you have changes, you need to either do it by first or report that before the 1st of May. And if it's property? If you have property or your own business, then you have exactly. the deadline the 1st of July. 1st of July. Yes. And then November is 
again the time to check or the yes. where you can check the the numbers for the preliminary income assessment for the following year. Yes, and if you be aware of that you need to change your tax assessment notice, then at the same time check your preliminary income assessment and see if you need to change that also. Okay. But most of the time you need also to change it. Okay, great. Now we have talked a lot about logging into the tax system and you said something about e-tax. Um, and how, how do you log in? How, how does that digital part work? And that might be a very digital. Mm -hmm. When you're going to the municipality and tell them that now you are living in Denmark, you have a Danish resident and you get the Danish e-power number, you also get a name ID. Mm -hmm. And the name ID is the digital key to digital Denmark. Okay. For some of you, it is calling them ID, but for some of you, it is my ID. Okay. Because from the first of August, it will be NEM ID will be real placed of my ID. Midi ID is the Danish word, but it will take some times before everybody in Denmark have the new NEM ID. So currently we have NEM ID, but it will be changed to Midi ID. My, my ID, ID yes. Midi ID. Okay. And that is the digital key. And right now in the e-tax, you can log on with the name ID or you can also have a password. Okay. But approximately 1st of January, it is ex expected. The 1st of January, you can only log on the e-tax with your name ID, Midi ID. And then you have access to your, all the information the Danish tax agency have about you. Okay. So you can see your tax assessment notice, you can change your tax assessment notice, if there is a tax assessment notice, of course. So if you arrive the 1st of July this year, you will have to wait until next year before you can see a tax assessment notice. Okay. You can see your preliminary income assessment, you can see the tax information we have about you, what information the bank, the employer, the trade union have given to us. If you have bought a car, you can see which state you have bought it. If you have buy it, well, uh, have a house, you can see what date you have it or sold it. So okay. all kind of information. You cannot okay. hide anything from the Danish tax agency as long as it is information inside Denmark. Okay. And also some information outside Denmark because we exchange information with foreign countries. Okay. And that will also be information that you can see in the tax information in the e-tax. Okay. So there you can see if another country have reported some interest. Okay. Because you will have to tell us if you have a bank account in another country, how much money you have in the bank account and how much you have received in interest. And this in kind of information you can also see in the tax folder. Okay. So now you said name ID and you need a password. Um, can you explain more what is the name ID? Your name ID, that is the digital key. So you log okay. on, that is only it is your personal and you must not share it with everybody else. Okay. It is only you who can have it. Have it. Mm -hmm. And it is only you that know the password to the digital key. Okay. So you have the name ID where you have your CPR number and then you have made a uh, password. And I think that with my ID, you cannot have the password there. You will have to have a telephone and an app because ah. Then you don't have, right now, people have a piece of paper with numbers on. For the name ID. For the name ID. Yeah. But in the future, it will be from an app in the cell phone where okay. you can see which number you and accept okay. the access to the e tax Who gives you the name ID? That will be the International Citizen Service, uh, okay. Borough Service. Or you can also get it from the bank okay. because you'll have to go to the bank and get a NEM conto because all payments from the public will be transferred to a NEM conto. Also from your, uh, from your employer will be transferred to your NEM conto. So you can go to a Danish bank and also get a NEM ID, ID. Or my ID. Or my ID, okay. yes. So you get the NEM ID or eventually my, my ID, ID from either the municipality where you register or the bank where you yes. sign up to get a bank account. And if you get it from the bank, it is important that you ask the bank to make it so you can also use it to the public uh, governments and okay. authorities. Okay, so you can use it, for example, for tax. Yes. Yeah. 
for Tunnel Municipalities yeah. Yeah. web service. And what is the, the NEM konto? That is a is bank that, account. Yeah. Specific bank account where you are reporting. It is your NEM konto. So all payments from the public uh, will go to your NEM account. It also, your salary will be paid to your NEM, uh, NEM konto mm-hmm. uh, bank account. And right now, you can also have a foreigner bank account as NEM konto. So if okay. you cannot get a Danish bank account, you can have a foreigner bank okay. account as NEM konto. But there you must be aware of there are some conditions before you can have this foreigner bank account as NEM konto. Okay. You will have to have a law uh, attorney to uh, sign it is correct, it is you, or you'll have okay. to have two witnesses to correct it is you. Okay. So you cannot just send a piece of paper. There will be some stamps so, you need before you can have this for in the bank account. So if you set up a Danish bank account, you would ask the bank to make the bank account your NIM conto. Yes. And if you do not have a Danish bank account, then you, you set up... Uh, a foreign bank account uh, as yes, your name Yes, but then conto. you'll have to log on there. You'll have to go to name Conto's uh, website and mm. they have a form which you can fill in and send it to them. Okay. And there are also the conditions because there are some conditions before okay. you can have this foreign bank account. Okay. Great. Then we have talked a lot about what to do when you come to Denmark uh, in terms of uh, registering, making sure which tax liability you will be under, what to do during a tax year while you live in Denmark. But what do you do if you leave Denmark, if you um, decide to move out of the country and, and not come back again? Also, if you are going or outside, you are going uh, outside because of working. And planning to come yes, back. <laughs> and planning to come back. It is important that you contact the Danish tax agency because we need to know, will you still be full tax liable to Denmark or will you be limit tax liable to Denmark or will your tax liability end? So we will ask you a lot of questions. What kind of residence will you have in Denmark? Mm-hmm. And if you are still full tax liable, then you will have to report if you have income from abroad, even though that you are not in Denmark. If your tax liability ends, then we can make your tax right away and give the system automatic information. Otherwise, if we don't know anything about it, we can only see in the system that you have left Denmark, but we don't know, will you be back? Do you still have your resident? Then we think you are still full tax liable to Denmark, so we will still send your preliminary income assessment, tax assessment notice, and if you have this one with the deadline, the 1st of July, you can get an extra tax because you're not declaring before the 1st of July because you think, I don't have anything to do with Denmark anymore. Mm-hmm. So it is important. So we can finish your tax. So it is important that you contact the Danish tax agency so we can finish your tax in Denmark or we can make saying that you are still tax liable to Denmark. So you still need this information. Okay. And it this doesn't matter if it will be for work or for for good that you are okay. leaving Denmark. So if you leave Denmark, I assume not for a holiday, but if you leave Denmark... And only for work or if it is for good that you yeah. are leaving Denmark, then you'll have to contact. Or if you are going also for holidays, if you're going a backpack uh, or a trip for, for, three, a long four, term. for a long term, then mm-hmm. you'll also, because you'll have to go to the municipality and say that you're leaving Denmark for, let's say, several months, but you are still resident in Denmark, but okay. it is because of a long holiday that okay. you're going, then it's also important that you contact us and tell us it is only a holiday, so I will still be and I will not have any income and okay. then you take care of that. Okay, great. What if now you have um, l- listened to us talking and you have been kind enough to share a lot of information with us? What if um, the people listening still have questions? What can they do? They can either give us a call, mm-hmm. which will be for free. Also, if mm-hmm. they send an email, it will also be for free. And we have uh, some different uh, telephone numbers. It depends on what kind of questions you have. We have, If it is questions related to Danish income, it would be one phone number. If mm-hmm. it is related to foreign income, it would be another number. And if it is questions about property, we have a third number. So we have a lot of numbers, telephone numbers. So that would be go to the website, choose the subject that you need information about, and there you can see in the right side of the website, you can see the telephone number and also how long time you'll have to wait in the telephone. 
most of the time it will only be a few minutes. But from mid-March and at least one month from it, you can expect to at least one hour in the telephone, okay. maybe longer time. And sometimes you can even get the possibility to get in the queue because there are so many people who are calling us. Then you can send an email and there you can expect to have an answer in a few days. But in our period where we have the tax assessment notice, it can take two, three weeks. So it would be best for you, for you and for us if you give us a call. Okay. Just be patient and try again. Okay. If you Monday, don't get through. it is not so good to call Monday because people have the weekend where they have checked the tax and want to give us a call Monday. So if you wait till the next day, okay. most of the time there'll be yeah. no problem. That's a pro trip tip then if you're going to call the tax authorities. Yes. Okay. You can see in the website how long you can expect to be in the queue. So if you're sitting at your work and you have your lunch break and you can see the waiting time is more than 30 minutes when you can break off the call and give us a call in another okay. time. Okay. Well, Tina, thank you very much for um, telling us a lot about the Danish tax system. And I also learned something. So thank you very much. And we hope that you also got your questions answered. I have one thing more. Yeah. Because if you are living in Denmark and you are buying outside Denmark, and that is because there are new rules from the 1st of July. If you're buying things. Products from... Yeah. Outside Europe, you will yeah. have to pay VAT of the full amount now. Oh. There will be no limit. Okay. Before the 1st of July, it was only if you bought for more than 80 crowns, you will have to pay VAT. Also, there can be some custom duties. So I know there's a lot of people, including myself, who are buying from the website. Mm -hmm. And there it is important that you know if the website or the products are shipping from or inside or outside Europe because otherwise it could suddenly be very expensive for you. And the UK is outside Europe, so there will also be VAT and maybe custom duties and the same with Norway. Okay. So be aware of if you're buying something from the website okay. and that would be the full amount, you will have to pay 25% uh, in VAT and then maybe also some custom duties. Okay. Another important thing to remember yes. if you're in... Uh online shopper. <laughs>